Uh, most people don't know that uh, Leo Fong was a boxer with over 25 fights, many of which he won by knockout. He also admits that he was knocked out himself a couple of times. And, uh, but anyway, he talks about why it's important to have some knowledge of boxing in your martial arts. So remember that you are still in the Mavericks Dojo. theories in his uh, movement and when he bounced around punching and kicking and um, it totally uh, uh, fight the frustration from that fighting uh, no fight fight no fight uh, it changed him but at that time before he was pretty good with the wing shot it wasn't bad the only problem was uh uh, you know, if he turned and ran from him, then you, you, there's nothing for him to hit. So he fought some Japanese guy in Seattle, and the guy came after him. He popped him with that forward blast. The guy was knocked, he knocked him out cold. Wow. But with the one guy, when the guy ran, that's why I tried to kick it, catch him, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why Pacquiao was frustrated when he fought Mayweather. Uh, Mayweather didn't come after him. Mayweather, uh, you know, shifted, shifted, uh, twist, turned, and every way he could. You know, he was very defensive. Uh, you, you think that's always, uh, it seems that historically that's always the case where the uh, forward face fighter has a hard time with the defensive fighter. Yeah, uh, you know, some of the defensive fighters, uh, they all engage, uh, you know, defensive fighters all have one thing in common. That's uh, movable footwork. See, you got guys that are flat-footed like Joe Lewis. Hmm. Uh, the, you know, not the, not the karate Joe Lewis, but the, the boxer, you know. The, the brown bomber. Yeah, brown bomber. Now, in he, he, his time, he was pretty good because he had a good punch. He knocked everybody out. But uh, everybody that was good came along, had good footwork. From uh, Gene Tunney, you see, everybody with footwork beat power. Gene Tunney beat uh, Jack Dempsey, who had great power. And then um, Muhammad Ali beat Tunney Liston, who had great power. And he knocked out George Foreman, who, who could knock you out with one of his trip hammer punches. Mm -hmm. And then you got uh, Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather Jr. come along, and he's was forty nine old, he, and, and and he fought the punchers, the brawlers, and, uh, and 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 then you got Sergio Martinez, who was pretty good. Uh, Cotto beat him, but he had a bad knee, mm -hmm. and his knee was not bad. Didn't give up on him. Uh, he would have. Uh, Beating uh, Cotto because he beat little little Rio Cesar Child Best Jr. Uh, beat him like uh, it was his son. <laughs> twelve year, four, twelve rounds. Until he tried to slug with him, and then uh, little Cesar Child Best Jr. knocked him out, uh, knocked him down, almost knocked him out. But he got up smiling. He said he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I hung out with uh, uh, with uh, <clears throat> with Sergio Martinez. And he used to play soccer. His, his footwork was kind of like playing soccer. Uh, so Bruce, uh, you know, picked that up, and and uh, his idol was Muhammad Ali, because he bought every eight millimeter uh, 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 film he could find on the market. Did, did you, back, did, you uh, ever see Bruce, did, did you ever see Bruce Lee fight in the street at all? No, I uh, I just saw him. Uh, Spar with uh, <clears throat> with his guys like uh, Inosano and Ted Wong. Neither one of them a competition. Hmm. Yeah. One day we're telling them BS, and then he said, "Hey, we're going to back to Spar." So I went back to Spar with him, and and if I told everybody, you know, they, they said I'm, I'm BSing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't say much about it, but I actually couldn't do anything with me because I'm ex-boxer. Yeah. I didn't chase after. Him. I really 
be bouncing all over the place. I just kind of, you know, turn here, turn there. But watch him when he bounced in, trying to hit me with that sidekick. I sidestepped and he missed. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we did it for about 15 minutes. And then finally he said, and then he, he dropped his hand and we walked back into the house and sat there and started talking more about fighting, you know. He, he had, you know, pretty good respect for me because the thing is, I had 25 fights in the ring. And, and uh, I, I, I competed. I, I didn't, I was an armchair uh, martial artist. <laughs> wow. And, and then, so when, when, when he first, when I first met him, I, I was taking Taekwondo, and then I was taking Silwam and Choli Foot. I was going to those three schools every week. Wow. And, 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 and so one day he, he stopped me and he said, Leo, how come you going to all those different places? I said, Bruce, I'm looking for uh, the ultimate. Uh, and at the time, I was really boxing. I was really in shape because I used to go down to the gym and box at Sacramento State University boxing team. I go down there and I start out with the the batter weight, and move all the way up to the middle weight, and I was 132 pounds and, and, and spar every afternoon five days a week because one of my church members was on the boxing team. His name was Roger Ball. But he was not related to me, but he was a fong. Hmm. And so he said, hey, Reverend, you want to go down and work out with us? I said, yeah. I was sharp, but I first met Bruce back in 1962. And, and, and so, so after he got to fight with Wong Chop, uh, then, uh, then he, he said to me one day, he said, uh, he said, you know, uh, I told him I'm looking for this and that. He said, you know, man, uh, you know, you ought to take what's inside of you is, is the ultimate in you. That's what he said. Mm. That was a turning point of that statement. To take the unboxing skill and learn uh, to navigate through all the ranges. The kicking, <laughs> punching, the grappling range. And, and and so I got thinking about that. And I quit going all those places. And I just concentrate totally on boxing. And, uh, and it's, it's been, it's served me well all these years. It, to, yeah. Is to you boxing the most important part of any fighter to something that, you know, that, that we should all know boxing in order to be the best at any martial art? Yeah, because I think uh, if you want to see there are two kinds of, uh, two kinds of martial arts, uh, there's a compliance, compliant fighting or the guy uh, you fighting stand in front of him cooperate with you and you're going to look good. He's going to make you look good. <laughs> yeah. You see, like uh, George Dillman, he knocks everybody out with a with a touch here and there, you know. But the problem with George Dillman, uh, he can, he hits the pressure points and, and, and he's for real. He'll knock you out. He can stand there and let him pop you on the, under the ear and <laughs> under the chin and in your stomach and all that. But the problem is if I don't want him to hit me, he ain't gonna hit me. Cause I had one of his top students, uh, uh, Dustin Seals. He trained with me for a while. I said, Dustin, uh, you know, why don't you try hitting me with one of the pressure points? We were smiling. Now I popped him in the stomach with a left jab, getting ready to set him up with a left hook. And then that was the end of it. I hit him right in the solar plexus. Oh, he, uh, he, he said, I said, you know, the problem is you can tell George you want to, but, uh, they, they have, they don't have a delivery system. They got the bomb. It's like North Korea. They throw it threatening and, and making all kinds of noise. But how the hell are they going to get that bomb over here in the United States? They might eventually learn how to do it, but if things fall into the ocean. Well, basically, if you can knock somebody out, you know, hit them with the pressure point, if they, if they stand there and cooperate. But if they move around, you got to catch, you got to set them up. It's going to be tough. Yep. And, and, and so, so that's compliancy. And non compliancy is like boxing. It's free fight. Hmm. You come to the you come to the fight with nothing on the on the agenda and you just want to counter whatever this guy's gonna bring to you. You see, that's the difference. Right. That's non compliancy fighting. If you watch, everybody goes, Wow, he's so fast and then and, and, and I never forgot what my coach told me one time. That was 1947. 
I was boxing for Hendricks College in Conway, Arkansas. So I, I was watching my opponent. I said, well, I'm waiting on this other guy to get uh, that bout to, to end so I can go and fight my fight. So I decided, well, I have nothing else to do. I went to sneak down the peak and this guy was snorting going on the side of boxing in front of the mirror. And he looked pretty good. I came back, I said, Coach, that guy fight, man, he looks pretty good. <laughs> he, 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 you got to watch him. You look like a pro. And then he said, sit down. He said, you know, man, ain't going to look so good when you start hitting him back. <laughs> <laughs> so we got in the rain. The bell rings. We touch gloves. I move around. I fix a, a jab to his body. He dropped his hand. Boom, I came up the left hook. I knocked him out cold, man. Oh, I got him out in 20 seconds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he came back to my coaches, and we were walking down the steps. He put his arm around me. He said, what the hell did I tell you? I said, you're right, coach. I will never forget this. <laughs> you know? I said, these we- guys look good. But you hit him back, they ain't going to look so good. That's my motto now. I was a counterpuncher. A counterpuncher. All they right. Got, I, I want to use old punch, and I'm, I'm going to stick you before you, you throw something. Wow. And I move. And then if you miss, I come right back on you. And I keep distance. 